Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the third episode as we continue to celebrate the birth anniversary of one of the greatest ladies in Islam. And as a matter of fact, the great, one of the greatest ladies in history. It is no other than Lady Zainab. Peace and blessings be upon her for this reason. I would like to congratulate all my dear Muslim brothers and sisters everyone across the world, especially the Imam of our time, may Allah hasten his reappearance to the Ahlul Bayt and to two individuals, Al-Abbas alayhi salam and Imam al Hussein. peace and blessings be upon them both on this very auspicious occasion. But in the previous episodes, we have been talking about the merits, the attributes, uh, the characteristics of Lady Zainab alayhi salam and we touched upon a book uh, written by Nur al-Din al on the attributes of Lady Zainab. So it's very important to look at that book and for the, for the dear viewers uh, who didn't get the chance to view uh, the previous episodes, you can log into our YouTube channel at Imam Hussain 3 tv uh, or check out our Facebook page uh, for to, to, to watch the previous episodes. But about Lady Zainab alayhi salam, it is beyond the power of any ordinary person to pen the merits and the virtues of Lady Zainab, whose praise requires eloquence of that which brings forth by the Holy Quran. And as fluently expressive as the tongue of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his infallible progeny, Zainab was too great to rest on family achievements. She explored a different path to own for her own and became the reason behind the virtues of her being entitled as a Zahra Athania, the second only to her impeccable mother Fatima Zahra, the greatest lady in all worlds and all times. Lady Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam needed an immaculate deputy to demonstrate to the entire world and to women especially the greatness of Islam and the practical meaning of piety virtue and feminine rights. This is why her elder's daughter uh, Zainab alayhi salam took the stand and bore the responsibilities, the heavy responsibilities, which enabled her to have an enormous stance in history. She left a name behind Zainab. Whenever you ask who is Zainab, just Google the name Lady Zainab, Zainab. Zainab al-Kubra, and you'll find who this great individual is. Although not fully infallible like Prophet Muhammad, uh, like the Prophets, like the Imams, like her mother Fatimah Zahra alayhi salam, yet the heroine of Karbala set a lasting message, set an example for everyone, that even some of the infallible uh, Prophets before uh, her grandfather could not make a stand like Zainab alayhi salam. Although, as we mentioned in the previous episodes, she has the minor infallibility, not the major infallibility. But yet, Zainab was that distinctive individual. She was so distinct in her own ways that no person or no other lady can reach her status, except for, uh, uh, you know, being Fatimah Zahra and the other ladies. But Zainab alayhi salam was the embodiment of practical knowledge. Now I would like to emphasize on this, uh, on this point. Shaykh al Saduq, may Allah rest his soul in peace, he writes on the authority uh, of certain individuals who received it from the Imams. He says Zainab had a special authority on behalf of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. People used to refer to her in jurisprudential matters related to what is permitted and what is forbidden until her nephew Imam Zayn al-Abideen alayhi salam recovered from his illness. I want to emphasize on this point that Zainab alayhi salam received special authority from Imam al Hussein. Although Imam Zayn al-Abideen was present, he was the infallible leader. He was the infallible Imam who was supposed to lead the Ummah. Yet when he was ill, Zainab alayhi salam took the responsibility, the authority from Karbala all the way to Medina until Imam Zain al Abidin was healed from his sickness, from his illness. So we find 
anyone that needed anything regarding jurisprudence, faith matters, anything related with religion, went to Zainab alayhi salam. Similar to when Imam al kadhim alayhi salam was taken to uh, Baghdad when he was imprisoned, Ma'suma, his daughter, was where? She was in Medina. Yet anyone that would want that went to the house of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam saw Ma'suma and she replied to their acquires. She replied to their questions. But yet the certain story, long story short, they wanted to make sure if her answer was correct. So they went to Imam al Kadam and they seen the same answer. He says, Anything you need, go to my daughter Ma'suma. So we do find that the Ahl al Bayt alayhi salam have grand, the, the, the women of Ahl al-Bayt have received certain levels where they have reached the minor infallibility. Not the major one like the Imams and the Prophets, but a minor one to enable them to become those individuals who lead uh, the Muslim Ummah. But if you want to look at the knowledge and deep the knowledge of um, uh, Zainab alayhi salam, we see that knowledge unveils all realities. Regarding to Zainab, if you look at what she did in the court of Yazid, the knowledge that she spoke of, she unveiled what Yazid had in planned. And what's the moral of this? Is that no aspect in human life does not require knowledge and awareness. Her father Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam, in his famous advice to his disciple Kumail bin Ziyad, in, this is mentioned in Nahj al-Balagha, has beautifully outlined the crucial part of knowledge as more worthy than wealth. Imam Abu Talib salam, he states, knowledge guards you while you have to guard wealth. Wealth decreases by spending while knowledge increases by spending. What's the correlation between this tradition and Zainab salam? The relation between this is that if we study what happened after Ashura and in the court of Yazid and what Yazid did to the Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salam a special speech of Zainab we will find that Yazid whatever he did the hate that he had and the tragedies that he committed against Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salam and the calamities that Lady Zainab had to face one would think that any ordinary woman would collapse at that moment, seeing her brother being killed, seeing everyone around her being killed. Yet Zainab had that personality where she stood up against the tyrant of her time. And what did she do? She fought back. She defended the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. How did she fight back? Did she fight back through a sword, through a weapon? No. Her only weapon was raising awareness, bringing everyone together so they would know what happened on the day of Ashura, telling them who their grandfather were. Because when, upon entering the cities that were, they were taken around, they thought they were rebels against the government. They didn't know that this group of people were descendants of Prophet Muhammad When they realized, they knew that the opponent, which was Yazid, may Allah curse him, had something to do with the killing of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Everyone rose against him. Zainab caused a revolution. This is why when we say that, yes, Imam Hussain sacrificed, but Zainab was the one to continue the sacrifice. Zainab was the one to continue the message of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And that's why we need to focus on her life. Because honestly, if it wasn't for the three women, if it wasn't for Khadija, Fatim al-Zahra, and Lady Zainab, Islam would not survive the women, going back to the women aspect in Islam. Women like Khadija, Fatim al-Zahra, and Zainab were very crucial, had a very important role to play within Islam. If we go to Khadija, we'll find Lawla Amwal Khadija, wa Saif Ali Talib, wa Imanab. If it wasn't for the wealth of Khadija, the sword of Ali Talib, and the bravery of Ali Talib, and the faith of Abu Talib, Islam would have never existed. And if we go to Fatim al Zahra, well, Fatim al Zahra needs no introduction. The eloquence and the way that Fatim al Zahra led her life 
was amazing. And if we go to Zainab alayhi salam, we'll find that she continued the message of Islam. Because honestly, Islam would have left here in Karbala. Islam would have stayed here and nowhere else. But yet Zainab took that stand and made everyone understand who is on the right path, who possesses divine knowledge. And of course, Zainab alayhi salam, if, we, if, if, you look, if you look into her speech, you will find that it's out of the ordinary that a woman that has not been taught before Imam Zain al-Abdin salam tells her, Oh, Amma anti alima ghair mu'allama, oh aunt, you are a scholar without being taught. A person that has never been taught before, speaking so elo eloquently in front of the tyrant of her time, she, said, she tells Yazid, Kid kaydak was asayak, oh Yazid, plot your plots and try your hardest. For wallah, la tamhu dhikrana, by Allah, you will not eliminate our mansion. Why didn't she say, why didn't she, she say the mention of Ahlul Bayt? Tamhu dhikrana, because she is a part of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. She possesses the minor infallibility which, which emanated from Prophet Muhammad, emanated from her mother, father, and of course her development. So we find that Zainab alayhi salam is included in Ahlul Bayt through her speech. She, she defended Ahlul Bayt because Ahlul Bayt means everything to her. But inshallah, we'll continue our discussion, but after the short break, so stay tuned. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I greet you and welcome back to the second part of tonight's episode as we continue rejoicing the birth anniversary of our great lady, Lady Zainab. Peace and blessings be upon her. And once again, I do congratulate you on this very auspicious occasion. But continuing the discussion where we left off from beginning, uh, from uh, before the break. In Islam, as everyone knows, Knowledge is not only confined to men. Women are also urged to pursue knowledge, to acquire it. And Zainab Islam, through her stand, made it clear to the entire world that whenever we see something done wrong, whether we are male or female, whatever, and whenever we see something being done wrong to our neighbors, to ourselves, to our religion, of course, we have to make a stand and make everyone understand what the truth is. Because the truth is what keeps everything going. And honestly, if you go through history, you'll find that everyone wishes to be with the truth. Yet there is so much falsehood around that it's very hard to follow up. But Zainab alayhi salam, and through her actions, we find her demonstrating what the, the teachings of Islam. Islam restored the status of woman, the natural status of woman. And with an emphasis on women being literate and being knowledgeable. Why? So they can nurture a society, so they can nurture their children to build our communities, to build, to build our societies. Because they are 
the future, the hope that everyone wants to be. You know, if you look around, everyone wants to continue. The women are the ones who educate. So do men. But spending the majority of the time with the children enables them to, con to, to make them better individuals. The mother has a huge influence on her child and psychology proves that. But if we continued, female leaders in Islam have been overlooked by the mainstream Muslim world today and for centuries. The truth to be told is that if it weren't for the woman that I mentioned earlier, Khadija, Lady Fatima al-Zahra and Zainab, Islam would not survive. And that's one of the crucial points that I would like to touch upon tonight. But on the 5th of Jamad al-Awwal, in the 6th year after Hijra, Zainab alayha salam and the whole entire world celebrates her birth because she is the female leader that brought the right back to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Through her actions against the tyrants of her time, through her stand against falsehood, people began to know who the Ahlul Bayt were. People began to know how wrongfully Imam Hussein alayhi salam was murdered. This is why we find that throughout Zainab's life alayhi salam, she had gatherings for women where she disseminated the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. She disseminated the knowledge and teachings of Islam to the point where she became alima ghair mu'allama as Imam Zain al-Abidin refers to her. Lady Zainab used to get gatherings and teach people about Quran and Tafsir Quran, the exodus of the Quran. She was relentless in her observance to her duties, to her religious duties. And night prayers and the mustahabbat, the recommended prayers, would never leave her, nor fasting. To the point, especially night prayer, to the point where Imam Hussein alayhi salam, on the day of Ashura, she was known as the worshiper, al-abida. On the day of Ashura, before Hassan al Islam left, he tells her, O oh, sister Zainab, do not forget me in your night prayers, in your Salatul Layl. O oh, sister, do not forget me in your night prayers. This is an infallible telling his sister that, O oh, sister, do not forget me in your night prayers. This brings forth evidence to the minor infallibility of Zainab, to the knowledge that Zainab possessed to her great personality, to her elevated status. This is why we see other titles as well. We find that the worshipper, we find that she is the generous one. Karima to Ahlul Bayt. Zainab alayhi salam, according to various narrations, whoever beseeches her in the first episode or second episode, we mentioned how Zainab alayhi salam used to grant, and up, to, up until now, grant the wishes of those who beseech her. And this is why we find her name, or her title being entitled Karima to Ahlul Bayt. She was very generous according to the Imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. Whoever needed something while she was in Medina or in Kufa, everyone would go to the house of Zainab alayhi salam. Everyone would knock on her door and ask for something and she will always give it to, her, to, to that needy individual. She got married to her first cousin, the son of Ja'far al-Tayyar. And honestly, they had a very well-off life, but yet they lived a very humble life. Everything they had, they gave it away to charity. Because what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the, in the Holy Quran? لَن تَنَانُوا الْبِرْحَ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحَبُّونَ You will not reach the elevated status. You will not reach the pleasure of Allah until you give what you cherish. Zainab alayhi salam lived a life of obedience. This is why she was named the worshipper, the generous one of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Yahya al-Mazani reports, you know, I was in the neighborhood of the commander of the faithful, this was in Kufa, sorry, in Medina, 
for a very long time and close to Lady Zainab's house. He says, I swear by Allah, I never saw her shadow and I had never heard her voice. If she wanted to visit her grandfather, Rasulullah wasallam, she would do so at night with Al Hassan on her right, Al Hussein on her left, and the commander of the faithful in front of her. When she would get closer to the tomb of the, com the commander of the faithful, would first turn the lamps off and let her continue. Once. Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam asked his father for the reason of turning off the lights. He says, I fear that one might see your sister's shadow. To that point of modesty, Zainab alayhi salam had. This goes out to our dear sisters is that in order for, for one to reach a very high status, a person must be modest. A person, I'm not saying that if you go around, let people walk around you and so you don't see the... This is Zainab alayhi salam. People don't have to see your shadow, no. But act in a modest way. Act in a way where people get to understand that you represent Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, be representatives of ourselves. So we, as followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, as sisters, you must continue in the footsteps of Lady Zainab alayhi salam. Being that individual who inspires other ladies that whenever they see you, they either ask of the great modesty you possess or they say that is the modesty of Zainab. Although no one can reach the level of Zainab, but one must get or one must try their best to live up to the standard of Zainab alayhi salam. But I would like to cut it off right now by, or conclude tonight's episode by touching upon uh, a very nice story from when she was little, narrated by Ibn Abbas, who was very astonished at this action. He says Zainab, when she was small, she saw her mother giving the speech in the mosque of Rasulullah regarding the rights that were stolen from her regarding Fadak and other things. So Zainab alayhi salam heard that speech once and memorized it from day one. Everyone realized that this young girl had something special about her. Something was special about that young girl. From day one, this was uh, when she was five or six or seven years old. Everyone was astonished. Zainab repeated the same speech without any mistakes. So from day one, Zainab alayhi salam possessed that knowledge. So this message as a conclusion, the message that we send from today is that we must become those individuals who aid Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. We must be those individuals who continue to support the cause of Ahlul Bayt and be representatives for them and true representatives for Islam. Lastly, I would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shed his blessings and mercy upon everyone. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.